Utah straddles the boundary between the actively extending Basin and Range Province to the west and the relatively more stable Rocky Mountains and Colorado Plateau to the east. This boundary coincides with an area of focused seismic activity called the Intermountain Seismic Belt. Since pioneer settlement in 1847, Utah has experienced 16 damaging earthquakes greater than magnitude 5.5. However, geological studies of Utah's active faults, of which there are more than 200 statewide, indicate a long history of repeated large earthquakes of magnitude 6.5 and greater prior to settlement. For example, about 300 years ago, a major earthquake shook the southern Wasatch Front near the present town of Payson. Based on geological studies, this earthquake occurred on the Wasatch Fault, the longest and most active fault in Utah. Although no large earthquakes have ruptured the Wasatch Fault historically, abundant geologic evidence shows that the fault has generated more than two dozen magnitude 6.5 to 7.5 earthquakes in the recent geological past. Because of the close proximity of the Wasatch Fault to the majority of Utah's population, as well as relatively high rates of historical seismicity in the region, communities along the Wasatch Front are exposed to the greatest earthquake risk of the entire Intermountain West region. The Wasatch Fault is a normal fault that extends about 240 miles from southern Idaho to central Utah and is largely responsible for the dramatic topography of the Wasatch Range. Normal faults result in vertical movement, with the valley side of the fault dropping down relative to the mountain side. During a single large earthquake on the Wasatch Fault, fault movement at the ground surface can create a break or scarp about 5 to 10 feet high and extending along the base of the range for as much as 25 to 40 miles. Over millions of years, repeated individual fault movements have combined to form the prominent vertical relief of the Wasatch Front. Geologic studies show that the Wasatch Fault is composed of 10 individual fault segments, each of which is capable of generating a large magnitude earthquake. For the central, most active part of the fault, which includes five individual segments between Nephi and Brigham City, a large earthquake has ruptured the ground on average about every 300 years. This pattern of earthquakes in the geologically recent past is a realistic guide to what we can expect in the future. Thus, geologic studies help us understand the earthquake potential of the Wasatch and other faults and ultimately help us take steps to reduce Utah's seismic risk. At this site, the Utah Geological Survey and the U.S. Geological Survey collaborated in a detailed study of the Nephi segment of the Wasatch Fault. By excavating a trench across the trace of the fault, geologists are able to expose and study sediments near the fault and reconstruct the history of past fault movements. Each fault movement that breaks the ground surface occurred during a large earthquake. This trench at the North Creek side on the Nephi segment exposed layers of sediment in a steep, west-facing hill slope formed by multiple recent movements on the fault. The North Creek exposure revealed evidence of four large earthquakes in stream and debris flow sediments estimated to be about 5,000 years old. In the trench, geologists carefully cleaned the walls, set up a one meter or about three foot grid using carefully surveyed <coughs> string lines, and systematically photographed each square in the grid. The individual photos are then merged into a composite photograph of the entire trench wall. Geologists use colored flagging to mark significant geologic features, including faults, distinct sediment layers, and locations for soil samples used to date the deposits. Electronic instruments are used to accurately measure and map each layer and fault, which yields an accurate and complete map of the trench exposure. After compiling a detailed map of the site and trench walls, the geologists measure the amount of fault movement that occurred in each prehistoric earthquake and submit samples of various sediment layers for dating. Two dating methods are typically used, radiocarbon dating of organic sediment and charcoal and luminescence dating of fine-grained sand. Using the information on when the different sediment layers were deposited and whether they are displaced by faulting, geologists can interpret a history of when past large earthquakes occurred. 
This information helps us understand how frequently large earthquakes happen on the fault and is used to make earthquake hazard assessments for the Wasatch Front region. This trench investigation took about two weeks to complete in the field and involved scientists from the Utah Geological Survey and the U.S. Geological Survey. The project was partially funded by a grant from the National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program. The results of this study will be released in a written report by the Utah Geological Survey. You can find reports of similar fault studies at geology.utah.gov. For more information about earthquakes in Utah, an easy-to-read booklet prepared by the Utah Seismic Safety Commission titled Putting Down Roots in Earthquake Country is available at ussc.utah.gov. In addition, information and reports on earthquakes and other geologic hazards in Utah can be found at the Utah Geological Survey website, geology.utah.gov.